Android Studio inherits IntelliJ IDEA's debugging system. It allows you to create breakpoints to suspend your application at any point and to inspect the state of the application internally. To set this up, I'm working with an application that I built from the basic app template. You can start with this application or with any other that has a button with a click listener. I'm going to create a new function that I'll call loop something. Within the function, I'll create an array list using the Kotlin function array list of. I'll set the type of the items in the array list to string, and I'll pass in three values of one, two, and three. Now I want to loop through those items. I'll use a for loop, and within the for loop, I'll create a variable named i, and I'll set it using the in operator, and I'll start from zero until items.size. And that's like doing an iterative loop in Java. The until operator means go until it's the size minus one. Now within that loop, I'll use the print line function, and I'll pass in items, and then I'll use array syntax, and I'll display the item at that position in the array. I'll run this code in the background just to make sure my code is working. And then I'll get rid of this call to snackbar.make, and instead I'll call my new function. So now I'll run the application, and nothing visibly happens in the app itself, but I'll go to the logcat window and show that with a filter of system.out, I see one, two, and three. So I know the loop is working. Now I want to set breakpoints. You can set breakpoints by clicking in the gutter next to the line you want to stop on. Then, run the application in debug mode. You can do that from the menu by selecting Run, Debug, and then the name of the module, or from the toolbar by clicking on the bug icon. When you debug the application, you'll see that little dialog appear on the device, indicating that it's starting debugging. And then I'll click on the floating action button, and I'm brought back to Android Studio because now I'm suspended on the breakpoint. A new window now appears named Debug. It has a toolbar at the top with buttons that let you step over and into code, and you can also run to cursor and do other kinds of debugging operations that are available in many good debuggers. While the app is suspended, this Variables window will show you the references and values of your variables. Anything that's in scope should automatically show up here. Now I'm going to click on the Step Into button, or you could press the associated keyboard shortcut, and I go into that first line of code within the function. I'll step over, and now I have the items array, and in my variables view, I can see those values. Now I'll continue stepping through the for loop. Notice that the values of each item are shown here, and they're also shown in the variables area. You can actually get values of more complex expressions, I'll select the expression items.size, I'll right-click on that, and then I'll select Evaluate Expression. I'll click the Evaluate button, and that's a runtime evaluation of a complex expression. Over here on the left side of the debug window, there are buttons to terminate the debugging session or to continue running from this point. I'll click that button, and then I'll go back to the Logcat window, and I'll see that same output. So those are the beginnings of debugging in Android Studio. Again, all of this functionality is inherited from the base application, IntelliJ IDEA. So if you already know how to use IntelliJ, you already know how to debug in Android Studio. But if you're new to this platform, you'll find a rich set of tools for debugging and fixing your software.